Welcome back to the studio, everybody. My name is Jim, and in this video, we're making some colored pottery, more specifically, some Narakomi colored pottery, using some double plaster press molds. So let's get started. Now, what's nice about a plaster mold that's in two pieces like this one is that you have the option to add two different pieces of clay on the inside of the plaster mold. That's how I made this cup here. So for this cup, I used a Narakomi slab for this half, and I used a blue slab for the other half. Now, even though it's tricky using wood as a positive for a plaster mold, I like it because it's easy to manipulate and you can get really sharp edges. And those edges translate really well in clay as long as you press the clay into the mold hard enough with the proper tools and the proper techniques. Check out these two side by side. Why did I make a double plaster mold? Why not? Honestly, I had to make one and I figured I'd make two and I could do twice as many, twice as fast. So let's make some cups. Here's the Narakomi block we're using today. I only have about an inch left, which means I have maybe enough for four or five pieces more. So once it's gone, it's gone. I can make it again, but it'll never be the same. That's the cool thing about Narakomi. I cut this recently for the last two cups, so this is the cut side. I'm laying it face down on the canvas with my two wood boards on either side. Got my wire tool, cut. Let's do the cool reveal, shall we? Ooh. Gotta wedge this clay up a little bit. It's been in the bag for a while. I like to save clay by rolling my Narakomi slab on top of a plain slab. It kind of stretches the block, so to speak. So I'll roll a quarter inch slab first, lay this on top, and roll it out. Now, take my slab and lay it on top, and roll it out the rest of the way. I roll from the middle forward, and from the middle back towards me. That creates the least amount of distortion. Sometimes I'll flip it to easier roll out this part forward. So this slab got much larger by adding it on top of a plain white slab. Now I've already used this mold with a red clay and a blue clay for the other half, and so I figured we'll use some black clay for this one. If you wanna learn how to make colored clay of your own, I'll put a card up here. But this is 3% black mason stain wedged into the clay. I'll do the same thing as before. I'll roll out a slab of black clay, I'll add it on top of a white slab of clay, stretch it out, and then we'll move on. Let's skip ahead. Because I've used this mold before, I know what I need in terms of measurements. What I need is a square of clay that's five inches tall by five and a half inches wide in order to fill the area with enough clay. So let's cut some squares. You can see when you laminate the colored clay on top of the white clay, you get a good eighth inch thickness for each of the clays. We are ready to go with these pieces. Let's lay them into the plaster and start that process. I know this mold. I know where the edges are. And so once I've kind of got the clay press in there, I take my fingers and I work it along those sharp edges. There's one there. That gets me those sharp edges that I want from this wood mold. There's a crease here that if I don't press, I won't get it to show up. I have to make sure I work the clay into those creases. And because of the canvas texture, I also go through and I can press every single inch. I've used a sponge before, but honestly, you don't even need to use it. If you use your finger with enough pressure, you can compress this well enough, don't worry. So the colored slab, same deal. Taco it up. Lay it in and compress it into the mold. This part can be tedious, but don't rush through it. If you do, you'll lose the detail from your mold. We usually have some overlap here, so take a fiddling knife and cut that off. I cut straight down through it. 
works pretty well. Now when you're using a press mold, it's tempting to want to cut the clay off flush to the edge of the mold. However, if you do, then there's no clay to push against when you press the molds together. So you gotta leave a little bit extra above the mold surface. So, I tilt the knife backwards a little bit. That gives me a little extra clay after I cut this extra off. So you can see I have maybe, I don't know, a 16th of an inch or a 32nd of an inch of clay up here. This little bit of extra clay gives me some clay to press against when I put both pieces of the plaster mold together. You can see here, I left a little bit extra clay at the end of each piece instead of cutting it flush to the plaster mold. I'll do the same thing on the other half. I gotta move this one because if I don't, I'm making two black cups and two super rainbow cups. And I wanna make two half black, half rainbow cups. Let's be gentle. Little preview, I guess, right? Ooh, I like that. Let's see, this one's going vertical. So let's do a horizontal one. Well, it's diagonal, so I guess there is no horizontal or vertical. So it's time to slip and score, press them together, and see what we get. This is a homemade scoring tool that I made over 10 years ago, and it still works. I love it. I'm scoring outward so I don't draw colored clay the inside where the white clay is. I'm using a lot of slip, so I really want it to fill in the cracks. And now I'm gonna do some re-scoring. I always slip, score, and re-score. Slipping and scoring or scoring and slipping works, but if you do a re-score, it really works to slip into those scoring marks and it reestablishes the scoring marks too. In my opinion, it works a lot better. I always teach my students to score, slip, and re-score. Okay, time to press this together. Now at this point, I take my fingers and I run it through the seams to kind of force the slip into those connected areas. All right, time to take them out. They should come out pretty easy. There we go. Here's the black side, here's the colored side, and here's a side view. I like the black a lot. I'm pretty happy with this so far. Now there's a little bit of cleanup. You can see there's a seam here. I usually cut it with an X-Acto knife, but honestly, I'm not sure if I want to keep it or cut all of it off. What do you think? I kind of like showing the process because it's obvious anyway, right? That it's two different pieces of clay. But what do you think? Is that too much? Is it not enough? Should I smooth it out completely? Now this is too much. I gotta cut that off. But if I leave an eighth of an inch, like is that, I don't know. What do you guys think? Anyways, I need a bottom for this. And I like using similar colors because this is a black and kind of a red, white, blue, black striped piece. So I'm gonna use the extra black from earlier in the video. I wanna have the black on the bottom. So I'm gonna flip it over to the white side and do some measuring. This will fit perfectly. Isn't that cool to have a black bottom for your piece? I think so. I'm excited about this. And what do you do with the scraps? You save them for a big Narakomi scrap block. What's nice about using the white clay for the inside is that I can add a lot of slip and then I can smooth it out with a brush and you won't even know that I scored it on. Just press it down and wiggle a little bit. Here's the hardest part for me, is it's so messy. Because if you take a tool and if you knit to smooth it together, it really messes up all the colored clay. So you have to press it together, let it sit, and then kind of scrape off and compress the slip. 
If you smooth it together, you mess up all the color. Now for the inside, I'll take a brush and I'll just smooth out that slip with a brush. All right. And here they are. Not completely finished, but finished enough to give you an idea. Like I said, nice black bottom to it. You got your red, white, blue, black colored clay, and then the nice kind of black other half as a nice contrast. Last thing I would do would be to cut the rim at an angle, sand it down, make it look professional, like the one I have right here. This is a finished piece still drying, hasn't been fired yet. It's been uh, carved around the rim on a 45 degree angle. Then I used a green scotch bite scrubby pad to kind of sand down all the edges. You can see they're nice and smooth. The bottom is nice and finished, got the initials there. And I used a red slab for the back half of this one as opposed to the black slab for both of these. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed the double plaster mold. First time showing you guys, hope you enjoyed it. Using a plaster mold or a press mold like this video is only one way to make Nerokomi pottery or any kind of pottery for that matter. There are a lot more ways out there that I plan to show you, but until then, I will see you in the next video.